I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and welcome back. Today we're going to revisit a watch I looked at only a few months ago, and it might be the first ever affordable watch with a micro rotor movement, and that is the Solas Starlight. And we're going to revisit this one for three reasons. The first is that a lot's happened since that review. The Kickstarter was actually cancelled and it's soon scheduled to relaunch, so for those that are interested I just want to give an update to everything that's happened with that. The second reason is that I was sent a new version of the prototype that has a few minor changes. Nothing really major, so I think my previous review still stands. And if you never saw that review, you might want to go check it out just so that all of this makes more sense. But I also want to go over what those changes are. And the third reason is really a selfish one. The Starlight was hands down the hardest watch I've had to work with. The combination of Daphne hands and this Aventurine dial is really tricky to capture. Just depending on how you set up the watch and set up the lighting, it goes from looking like a beautiful starry night sky to just a straight up blue disco ball. So when the brand owner DU offered to let me borrow one of the new versions, I jumped on it, as I'm hoping that working with it will sharpen some of my own skills, just for the next time I have a challenging watch. Now, I did learn a little bit more working with this one, but I didn't quite crack the code to showing off Adventure Essence, or whatever they call it. So I decided to also take the opposite approach here, and also show off the watch with just natural lighting. And hopefully somewhere in between all of that, you might be able to get a good sense of what this thing looks like in person. So first off, let's just do a quick recap. I don't really want to repeat everything I said in the review, so this is just the bare bones of what you need to know. Solas is an Irish microbrand, and it's one that's trying to create an affordable dress watch with a micro rotor movement. And a micro rotor is just what it sounds like. The rotor is shrunk and then pushed into the movement. And the idea is to kind of give you the best of both worlds, where you still have the convenience of an automatic, but you can still look at the beautiful movement like a mechanical. Micro rotors aren't anything new, but they're usually kind of a niche in-house movement in watches that usually cost tens of thousands, whereas the Starlight is going to start at $329 with a Kickstarter. And that's also pretty good price for a watch with a real adventuring dial. Now, the whole trick to the Starlight is really in that movement. It's a newer movement that was developed and released by Hangzhou a few years ago. So it is a Chinese movement, which is why the movement is the watch's biggest strength as well as weakness. I mean, it's practically unheard of to get a watch with these features at this price. But there is a little bit of a gamble with that as well with the movement. While I'm sure Hangzhou has thoroughly tested this movement in-house, it doesn't have any history or reputation in the wild. Plus, it might be harder to get service later on. But that's the basics of what you need to know. And if you want to know more, I go into a whole lot more detail in the review. Now, let's talk about the Kickstarter itself. The first Kickstarter was on its way to meeting its goal. But DU cancelled it with maybe a week or two to go. Now, from my conversations with him... I can say that he's a very organized and methodical professional. But this is the first time he's ever tried to do anything quite like this. And there is quite a learning curve to both promoting a brand and running a Kickstarter. And during this whole thing, he was trying to learn as much as he could about the process, and maybe what he could do better. He's got some pretty interesting ideas and goals for where he wants to take the brand. And while hitting the goal he had set would create the starlight, it wasn't going to do much to help the future goals for the brand. So he started thinking about what he could have done better, and then decided that the best thing he could do was to try and take a mulligan or a do-over. Which is why the Starlight is now relaunching on Kickstarter on October 15th. But he hasn't just been sitting around doing nothing this entire time. He's really doubled down on his investment and his commitment to make this project a reality. So, the first thing he did was look at all the comments and the criticism he got on the first prototypes, and then take that to help create a new set of prototypes with some minor tweaks. And where last time he only had a handful of watches to send around for review, this time he had 14 review units made up and sent out, which I think is a lot, even for an established brand. So, I think it's safe to say you're going to see more of the Starlight in the coming weeks. But what's really impressed me, and why I say he's doubled down on all this, 
is that the cases, the dials, the hands, and the straps, they're already made up and ready to go. He's just waiting for the Kickstarter to end before ordering the movements, as they are the most expensive component. So I think it's very clear that he and his manufacturing partners are really dedicated to making this whole thing happen. And personally, that's something I would like to see more of on other Kickstarters. But let's move on to the changes, and most of them are minor. The first thing is the font. There was just a lot of criticism on the font choice for the watch, that it really just didn't fit for the type of watch they were going for. So the font on the dial as well as the case back has been changed, which to me is pretty minor, just because I didn't really mind the font in the first place. However, the logo itself is a different story. One of the most frequent comments the watch got was that the logo looked a little too much like Comic Sans font. So while the style on the new one is the same, the letters have been pushed together to look a little bit more like calligraphy. So a pretty minor change, but I do think it's a positive one. A Celtic weave pattern has also been introduced into the empty areas of the case back, just for a little bit more flair. I'm not sure if this was necessary, but it is a nice touch. They were also able to reduce the total thickness of the watch by 0.1 millimeters. 0.1 isn't a lot, but any reduction in thickness is always a good thing. So they're all pretty minor changes, but the one that I think made the biggest impact for me was removing the framing on the date window. This was really the first thing that I noticed, and I think it gives the dial a much cleaner and streamlined look. So definitely a positive change there. Now, the only other change that's worth mentioning is to the Kickstarter itself. Pricing on the lower tiers has been dropped just by a little. I think it's starting at $329 instead of $349. Plus, they have increased the number of those early bird slots. Now, the Starlight is a pretty interesting watch, but it really is one that's hard to convey without seeing in person. And if you are interested, I'll have a link below to the Kickstarter, as well as a link to my review just for those that want a more in-depth look. Otherwise, well, let me know what you think about this whole thing down below, and I'll hopefully be back later this week with another review. So, until next time.